many of you have heard of position sticky? Hey, so, let's talk about position sticky. It's a talk I've been saving, just in case we had extra time. And guess what? Today we have extra time. <laughs> so, position sticky is useful for when you want an element in using only CSS to automatically toggle between position, relative, and fix. So you want an element to remain visible on your page as you scroll. Here's the syntax for it, pretty easy and awesome, right, with all these under prefixes. But it's very similar to other uh, absolute or fixed positioning. You just set top, bottom, left, right, and that will control how it's displayed on the screen. So here's some lovely graphics that I built um, for this example. So we have top 20, 20 pixels. We want it to remain sticky on your page. So when you scroll, more than, and there's more than 20 pixels between the top and your element, it will uh, turn sticky on, and then as you scroll further, it will remain top 20 pixels. The kind of weird thing about position sticky, and the thing that a lot of people don't really understand going into it, is that it is it obeys its parent container's dimensions. So if you have it in a container element that has the same dimensions as the sticky element, it will do nothing, and you will have no idea why it's not working. So your container element has to be bigger than what you want to be sticky. Um, I get a lot of tickets on my GitHub. So here's one with the uh, bottom 20. You scroll down, hit the 20 pixel mark, and that remains fixed. Um, native support is really kind of weird for it. Uh, it was added in Firefox under a flag with Firefox 31 and then turned on in Firefox 38. It was available in Chrome for a while. You can see these little flags tell you when it's available under a flag. Um, usually you have to do something in the browser to opt in to the native position sticky available in your browser. So Chrome had it for a while and then they removed it. Um, I think they just weren't happy with the code that was written to support it. Um, so that was kind of interesting. I don't know. I kind of thought that it was going away and wasn't ever coming back. Because at that point, it wasn't actually a specification. There was no standards uh, article written around it. So I thought it was just going to die. Uh, but actually, it got standardized, or it's in the standardization process. Um, and it's now, in Chrome 52, it's going to be available again under a flag. Um, and this isn't chronological either. The first browser to actually support it was iOS um, and Safari. Uh, and you know how WebKit does. <laughs> They'll just add stuff without asking anybody. So, yeah, it's uh, available natively in a couple different browsers. Uh, a couple of caveats. Uh, most implementations do not support using it on table headers and footers, which is super nice. That would be awesome. Um, I don't know what, why browsers hate tables so much, um, but they do. And also, most implementations don't support it with display and line block elements. I don't know why. They should. Uh, so I actually wrote a polyfill. It's not actually a polyfill because it uses completely different syntax, but a JavaScript plugin that will allow you to emulate position sticky. It's called fix sticky. Hopefully it works. Yes. So this is a sticky uh, viewport top. And you can kind of see the gray container that it is inside of it's its parent container. So once it hits the bottom there, it disappears. Uh, this one is on a bigger container, so it keeps going. Um, there's weird sticky inside of overflow elements. Don't ever use overflow. It's really bad on mobile devices. There's a very weird browser support for it, so I wouldn't recommend doing that. But it's in there. Um, actually, position fixed, which is what fixed sticky falls back to. Um, or it uses when there isn't native fixed sticky support in the browser, it uses position fixed to emulate it. Um, and that's really spotty on old Android. So we, Film Group has another plugin called Fixed Fixed. Um, and those two work together. So if you include them both on your page, you'll get that for free. Uh, fixed sticky doesn't work with headers and footers. At least the official plugin doesn't yet. Um, I have code to make it work. I just don't want to support it <laughs> in the open source world. Um, so there's an actual implementation of this on something called dizziness. I'll show that to you. Uh, it's on dizziness.io. It's a little thing I built to sort of 
tell you who's your noisiest Twitter person that you follow. So you can unfollow super noisy people. Um, so you can actually go to this website and if you sign in through Twitter you can look at anybody's. So I'll bring up Matt's the spot. <laughs> Um, so Matt, you consume about 700 tweets a day, I consume, oh my gosh. I guess I have more people that tweet on my timeline, and you only publish about one and a half a day, well I'm up to almost four now, ugh. Good metrics. What's that? Metrics. Metrics, yeah. I, I should get a D3 thing going with this. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I use uh, Fix Sticky for actually the table headers here. Um, and so we'll put, these are all the people I follow on Twitter and it organizes them by average tweets per day. Um, so, yeah. I kind of use it every once in a while to go through my top ones to make sure that I like who I follow. And if not, I don't want to follow them. <laughs> it also works great for seeing who doesn't tweet. Um, some people, sometimes people have zero tweets per day, and you're like, why am I even following you if you don't ever tweet anything? Um, so yeah, you can use that, check it out, but the table headers here are actually sticky, so it's responsive. Ooh, responsive. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, my former coworker Matt Marquis, posted this snarky tweet when uh, a web kid had added it, but no one else had. Um, asking if we're actually going to make this a specification. And it is actually a working draft now. Yay! Um, so you can go and check that out. It's part of the CSS position 3 specification. So, yeah, it's standardized. Any questions? Matt. This is a problem that I have with either fix or, I guess, sticky positioning as well. Zooming? But, uh, no. Oh, okay. No. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, no, this is more on, on desktop. Browsers are, are places where you can use the spacebar to scroll. Oh, so yeah. when you have a fixed header and you hit spacebar normally, it ships everything, including the content underneath the sticky or fixed header. Um, so you end up over scrolling and you can't continue to read. Mm -hmm. And the only solutions that I've seen to that are like JavaScript based, where they have to hijack the scroll bar, and it's just a giant pain. So you're saying when you have like a fixed header on the top or the bottom, you'll yeah. do in spacebar I'll do a single page scroll. Yeah. But it it won't actually scroll the appropriate amount to compensate well, for those headers and yeah, headers. Yeah, compensate is the biggest problem. Yeah, I was gonna say I think it scrolls ninety percent of the page. It's the same thing as if you hit page down. Yeah, if you hit page down or if you just click on like the, the scrolling area on the browser. Yeah. I'm just wondering if people I have a good solution to that. That is a good question. I guess I, I mean, if, if I were in charge, if I had the golden whatever button, I would make that only scroll 90% instead of a full 100% because... Well, I think it should. does. Oh, it, it does? Yeah, like, you, you know, if you, uh, if you go to a page, and like if you go to the GitHub page and you hit uh -huh. spacebar or page down, Let's do it. like there's a couple of lines at the bottom of the screen that you'll continue to see. Let's try it on this. Yeah. Jen Schiffer. And then Jen Schiffer is off the screen. Yeah, so you end up kind of losing your context if you're not exactly sure what you're supposed to do. Yeah, I see what you mean. I think it's, it might be different in every browser, too. Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen this kind of functionality really abused more than I've seen it used usefully. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll see a lot of sites will put like social buttons and crap on there. Yeah. Talking about the position sticky. Yeah. yeah, where you're scrolling and it keeps like the Twitter and Facebook buttons on the screen. Um, I have like this much content. Yeah. If you were to look at the page, um, so I don't know. It's difficult to use this tastefully. On my site, I do use position fixed, but it's only on the side, which I mean, anywhere you scroll, you're not going to hit something where. It's overlapping content, so I don't know. I guess I don't really have a good answer for you other than don't use it on 
on sites that have readable content. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks everybody for coming. That's it.